I'm the pretty badass Kelly Klein, and you are watching Ambi. Hey guys, it's Alicia, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Kelly Klein. Yay! Hello! Hello! <laughs> Hello. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? I'm fantastic. I awesome. was saying before the camera started rolling, I am just so happy <laughs> to finally have you on. So yes. I'm stoked. Me too. It's been trying to get this together and yeah, it's just not matched up. Work it out. Now we're both here, Ring of Honor, yeah. in Toronto. Same time, same place. <laughs> I absolutely love watching you wrestle because you are such a force to reckon with and you are so tough. You love to kick as well, which is something that you know <laughs> I enjoy watching. But where's that toughness come from? Is that something you've always had or is that from when you started wrestling? That's definitely something that I've always had. Uh, my family is notoriously competitive. Um, we have had fights over board games. Um, we have had birthday, family birthday party cookouts where we've had to have photo finish foot races because somebody said they were faster than somebody else. So that's just how I knew life to yeah. be. Um, so I, I, I thought, I mean, I guess I thought everybody did that sort of thing, <laughs> <laughs> but every, everything can be made into a competition and I want to win every competition. So, so it just made sense. Let's yeah. just put that into everything that I do in yep. the ring. Or wherever. Or wherever. <laughs> <laughs> we well, actually weren't allowed to watch wrestling growing up, which I find super interesting because most people fall in love with it when they were kids. And you do actually have a bit of a family background when it comes to wrestling too. So h how was that for you? Was it something you were aware of, but you weren't able to watch it? Or how was that dynamic? I didn't really understand what professional wrestling was. I remember seeing ads for the monster truck shows, and I think I would see like, ultimate warrior I didn't know that's who it was I just remember this guy yeah. uh, when they would be saying they were coming to town I would only see those commercials but I one day my mom caught us watching wrestling like Sunday morning and I was probably maybe four I would guess and uh, she was like nope not anymore and then shortly after that it wasn't available we didn't have cable so it wasn't available anyway um, so I just wasn't even something I didn't even know I, it was missing. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like a big thing or like it was available and we weren't allowed to watch that channel. It just, we didn't even have access to it after that. So, but I grew up around um, high school and college wrestling. My dad wrestled for Purdue. Uh, my brother wrestled in high school. My, all my uncles and cousins, dad, brother, everybody coached wrestling and still do. Uh, my dad still does um, commentary for wrestling. That's I so helped awesome. with stats for wrestling. So, um, I grew up around that and that's why I really gravitate toward the, uh, grappling style and the really mat based wrestling and, um, have always just, that's why, you know, I, some of my favorites, um, are those more technical wrestlers. Cause that's what I grew up really okay. watching. It definitely shines through and it's, it's just amazing to me because so many people when they're at that level where it looks so natural in the ring, it's like they have been doing it since they were really, really young. So it's cool to see that it came a little bit later and it's just like, you know, that little fate, that, that little era wasn't even yeah. part of it. Yeah, I grew up uh, doing theater and performing as well as doing athletics. So really when I found professional wrestling, uh, even though I didn't know it was what I needed, before that, because I didn't know, you know, it was even missing. When I saw it, I was like, oh, th <laughs> this is the thing that does all the, you yeah. know, has all the things that I need. So, um, but I think I was able to really incorporate all the things that I did throughout life, whether it was um, softball, theater, dance, um, you know, everything. The competitiveness? Yes. <laughs> One thing I have to ask about, because it really caught my eye when I saw this, is tell me a little bit about that school bus that you happen to follow every day <laughs> when you're back home, and there's this father and their kid that you just were like, this is just the most adorable thing yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah, every day um, on my way to work, I just I take the same route, and I'm always, you know, the same time I'm behind this school bus, and it always stops at this apartment complex, and um, there's always all, you know, the parents, and they're waiting there with their kids, and they all get loaded up on the bus, and then after everybody's loaded, the first time I noticed it, everybody was loaded, and one of the moms, I saw her say something to the bus driver, and then I look, and I see this dad running, and he's got in each hand holding hands with a little girl and they're just running to keep up and these cute two little girls and he's running and they're running and then he gets them and then you know thank you to the bus driver for waiting and then after that um 
now it's like they don't even have to ask to wait. It's like kind of like the bus driver knows. Once yep. everybody gets gonna gets loaded up, they don't have to wait long. They're but it's like running. they get loaded and then they're running <laughs> and then they're loaded and then we're good. And um, That's so it's cute. just I, I I think I just like the um, it's there's this backstory you start to create with that chaos of, you know, him getting Why these two little like, girls yeah, getting, the... to, you know, and they've got their, their cute little hair and they've got their little coats That's and he's all. got it all together. But I can't imagine what that morning is like, to, you know, the little whirlwind of getting that and then running out the door and getting them there, but he does it. And, you know, so I just, I always think that's really cool. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. I love how you see those little things and you just kind of wonder their backstories and their lives. And yeah. now that you see it every day, I mean, that would kind of make me think, huh. I'm yeah, like, I always want to give him a thumbs they, up. Why are they a little bit yeah. late, you know? I'm just like, you, you did it. You got it. <laughs> you made it. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I mean, do, do you need me to take them to school? Like, do you want to, is that weird? Maybe. <laughs> so I haven't done that because that's, you know, even though I know I'm not, you know, yeah. a crazy person, it's, he probably is not going to let me take his daughters do, to school for think, him. Do you think you might ask or no? I don't know. If, they, if like, I see the school bus drive away and they look desperate, then I may be like, hey. They need a ride. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some things in your Twitter bio I'd like to hear a little bit more about. And the first one is just says, pretty badass, which is definitely mm. true. So for you, what would you say is one of the most badass things about yourself? One of the most badass things about me. Hmm. Oh, my gosh. That's That shouldn't be a stumper it's just there's so many of you know course. Mm -hmm. um I think that something that's just really badass about me is that I have been told for many reasons why I shouldn't make it in wrestling um and I've been told them for years by a lot of people including people that um, I trusted and that were close to me and should have supported me and um, to be able to, to come through that and to come through the um, gender barrier to not look like what all of the girls looked like when I started wrestling and to um, not have as much of a background and knowledge and have to play catch up and to um, you know, be the age that I am and to... Um, you know, when everybody's like, oh, the window's closing, you have to make it by this time or, you know, and, and to come through all of those things and uh, um, to, you know, go have to work with, um, you know, sometimes politics can work for you, sometimes they can work against you. And I've had to, uh, you know, go through that. I've had to go through when I've made, um, you know, the wrong choice and I've made mistakes and to come back from those things. So to be able to really... Um, be honest and see all of those things for what they are and then see that, um, you know, none of that stuff has power over me, I think is pretty, pretty badass. badass. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. The other thing in there that stood out is definitely uh, vegan in training. Because there are a lot mm -hmm. of wrestlers that I'm starting to interview, and I find it's now more and more of them are starting to mm -hmm. go and be vegan. So for you, do you find it difficult with all the traveling that you do, or are you catching on to which places and how mm -hmm. to kind of pre – a lot of it's um, prepping. Yeah, so I think now more than ever it's easier to do, and it also ha just – you have to have knowledge. Um I remember when I was eight years old, I tried to be vegetarian and it was difficult because when you're eight, you don't have a lot of control and my parents are supportive, but there was also not as much knowledge and I didn't have as much access or know how to um, get the resources and the research and everything. So um, I, I kind of tried to do that for like two weeks, but I just didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and then when I was 22, I think I found out that I have... Um, a major gluten sensitivity and I had to um, cut that out of my diet and doing vegan and um, no gluten is even more challenging. Uh, so then last year I was, um, I, I was phasing out animal products and then I was um, vegetarian and then I was eating vegan for a short time and then I went to Japan and um, I did um, just try to kind of let let go of my restrictions while I was there um, just because I didn't I didn't know what it would be like culturally and socially and I didn't um, know exactly how to like how to communicate what was going on and I didn't want to offend anybody um, but after going there I found that uh, things are very accessible and people are very understanding so then this last time I went there I was able to um, 
grocery shop and cook and be vegan. And I came home and I was able to remain vegan. Um, you know, so many restaurants offer options. And if you just are able to communicate with people and you know how to read labels, um, things are so much more accessible and available. So, um, it's, it's become, you know, to the point now where I kind of, I know what I'm looking for. It's, you just have to, you know, decide to do it. And, yeah. So, um, but a lot of times it is, uh, I think one of the biggest obstacles for people is social and cultural, especially when you have, um, nostalgia where you go to a family event and like one of the things my mom made me when I was little is tuna casserole. I can't have the pasta or the tuna. I could substitute those and it also had cheese and cream of mushroom soup. So it was like <laughs> the whole thing. I can't like, yeah, it was just a no, no, it was, it's no, <laughs> But um, you can substitute a lot of things and come up with something else that can satisfy that. And sometimes um, you just go and you know that while food can be um, very social and bring people together and create memories, that's not the only thing that does. So uh, for me, if I know I'm going somewhere, I'll eat a little something beforehand. I know that I can come home and eat something, but I'm there to be with the people. So um, while food can be sort of a tool or a catalyst for these different things and these memories. It's not the only thing. Um, you know, a lot of people have memories of, you know, baking with grandma or, um, your mom teaching you how to cook a pot roast or whatever it is, but you can still have those experiences. It's not about the food itself. It's about Mm -hmm. the experience and the learning and the bonding and spending time. And do you actually like being pretty hands-on and cooking? Because I like the little photographs you shared, (laughs) even like you and VJ Whitmer will be cooking together. And it looks like you're having a lot of fun being very hands-on and that's kind of the time you spend together. Yeah, it is. And I also don't like to pay anybody to do something I can do myself. Especially cheaper yeah so um but it is it's fun and then you can be creative I like kind of um one of my favorite things is when you can kind of look and see okay what ingredients do I have and what can I invent what can I do with this and come up with something um and just being creative and improvising but I do I enjoy cooking and I enjoy learning about cooking and experimenting with different combinations and flavors and um especially whether whether it's being vegan or whether you're one of the people that's on like the chicken and rice diet, which gets very boring, um, seasonings and spices. Go a long Game changer, way. yeah. And one thing that I really enjoyed seeing is you not only post a lot of inspirational quotes on your social media, like there are definitely a lot, but you also post lyrics. And one of the most recent ones was Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> uh, so for yourself, who do you find are some of those bands you've been going to as of late? Who are some you've been really digging? Oh man, I love music so much and there's not a lot of music that I don't like. I went to school for music education and um, it's just, it's how I use music to teach. Um, I always, a a big go-to is Ben Folds. Um, I love Ben Folds lyrics and I love piano rock. Um, And then being a musical theater person, uh, piano is a big big instrument for you know rehearsing and everything um and I I feel like Ben Fold's music speaks to that musical theater side of me too because he's such a storyteller and when you think about it um, we're all really storytellers and that's one of the things I love the most about wrestling is I'm here to tell a story and this is the medium that I'm using to tell those stories so I think that's something that's so important and um like when I was younger and I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling it was because um you know, we're, a lot of people are seeing, and we, my family and my mom, we were seeing, um, just the, well, there's this violence and disrespect towards women, but that's just the little part of the story. So, um, I think everybody wants to tell stories and everybody wants to hear stories. Everybody wants their stories told and we all do it so many different ways, whether it's through music, literature, art, whether it's through wrestling, um, even if you turn on ESPN, they are doing the um, the hour long stories about um, somebody who really supports a team or a player and how they got to where they are. And I just think that that is so important um, for the human experience. When it comes to Ben Folds, have you heard the acapella record that he put out? Because that's like mm-hmm. definitely musical theater. You yes, have. and I love acapella. I love I love choral singing I love acapella I was in a female quartet at one point um I love harmonies um and yeah (laughs) have you ever wanted to start a band because of that so I actually got into wrestling because I was in a band um 
briefly, it was a, a local to the Cincinnati area, and I was also waitressing, and my band got a pretty good gig, so we invited our um, our colleagues at the restaurant to come to our see our band, and one of the other waiters said, I'll come see your band if you get your band to come see me wrestle, and he happened to wrestle at Heartland Wrestling Association. I thought, okay, whatever, I'll try anything. So I went, and um, that first time I went to that event, I that was when I was hooked. That's so cool. I know yeah. you have a background in music, but I did not know you were in a band. I didn't, yeah, that I was, was really um, cool. Helped compose. I, I wrote a lot of the lyrics. Uh, we actually did record, um, not with that band, but the one of the members and myself took um, – some of the music and we rewrote it and then we recorded and um, it's actually available on on the internet yeah are you gonna tell people where um, is that like a chapter no you, you can people? i don't know the best way to say to go to it i can post it um and i can share it with you but if you search um 100 different spellings options cut copy paste like you will find it okay yeah <laughs> that's an interesting search yeah it's like the <laughs> That album is cut, copy, paste, I think. and But, like, options, 100 different spellings is, like, the project. I think I might be getting that. Okay. But it's if you put all that in, you It'll will find it. Up. You will find it. Yeah. Very cool. So it's – it's and all of the female vocals on it are me. We layered my voice. Um, most of the lyrics, um, particularly the female lyrics, are all lyrics that I wrote. Um, so, yeah. I'm checking this out. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> harmonizing with myself. <laughs> Let's wrap things up. I do want to leave it with the fans who will be viewing. Is there anything you want to say? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say a lot of things. Um, I think the most important thing that I want to say is you can make anything happen. And you know this because you. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is follow your bliss. And if you are doing what you love and what you know is right and it feels right, if you just keep following that path, um, you are going to be successful and that success can look like anything. And um, no matter what it looks like to somebody else or how they would define it, if you are really following that bliss and doing the things that make you joyful, um, you are going to be successful. You're going to enjoy your journey and um you know, you're going to be fulfilled. It's a beautiful part of words. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. It was an absolute yes, pleasure. Yes, thank Finally, you for having me. Having you Yay, on. we did it. <laughs> and remember to everyone viewing, visit us at alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See you next time.